What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be making a Ichigo sword using Blender and Roblox Studio so we can make a cool design for uh, new Roblox characters that I plan on making in the future. Let's hop straight into it. Alright, so uh, first, you know, we gotta do the basics, you know, start with the general template. Here I uh, delete the cube and then I just add a cylinder, make it long and thin for the sword, right? This is why I, my basic concept for the start was, you know, how to make a sword look like a sword, oh, that doesn't make sense. How to make a block look like a sword, right? So uh, I kind of got the basic shape of like um, a cylinder, making it super thin. And I got this like a little edge on the bottom. And I was playing around with some, uh, what's it called, edges here, trying to make some, I don't know, I was trying to move it up the ver vertexes. So, um, the, sorry, my bad, the vertices. So, you know, it wouldn't look so bulgy on the bottom because then it's like a big thick sword and then like, you know, a little pointy tip. Finally figured out how to do it. And then I moved up the, the eye, I would say like the outside ring, the bottom ring. So it looks more, what do you call it? Um, you know, professional and uh, not as weird shaped as a sword. And I make the sword a little thinner because I realized it was kind of thick still. And it was a little too thick for my liking. So uh, yeah, made it a little thinner and I smoothed it in it. Okay, that's not a word. I smoothed out the sword. And then, uh, and then I just saw right there, I looked up um, a basic shape of uh, the Ichigo sword. I'm trying to make it kind of round, you know, how um, the sword is kind of round in the anime. So I have a little bit of a curve, a little bit of roundness, but like, you know, I could definitely do better kind of thing. Um, so I, I play around here with some edges and I try to make it look, you know, like different shaped in size. And I, I think I got like a shape that I like. So I kind of st stuck with it there. Oh, and by the way, if you were wondering how I was able to like see through the mesh there is a uh, control Z. It lets you x-ray it pretty much so you can see straight through uh, without any like surface pretty uh, useful when moving multiple points at once yes yeah, so that's what I did and then here I'm extruding an extra angle here from the objects using control E I believe uh, highlighting the points and then or yeah highlighting the vertices and just using control E um, I try to make it solid like the object solid so it looks like a handle but uh, I didn't really get that like, it didn't really give me what I expected so I kind of like you know scratch that idea then right here I believe I looked up how to actually do it because I had no idea how to like connect some edges together because you know it's kind of diff confusing the first time um then I realized what I was doing and then first I tried connecting the edges by moving them which you know it, it looked like it worked at the start because I was like oh, okay if I click two angles at once it would you know move the shape inwards but then I saw on the bottom it actually moves the point and doesn't like create a new point so then I I just played around with a couple things and I f figured out how to create a surface area instead which uh, helps a lot more than creating just like origin instead of just moving the shape and then I was go trying to go for the hook right now because I had like the basic big shape done big shape of the sword done but I couldn't figure out how to like make the what's it called the hook look smooth and not so like wonky which uh to do this i just like added an extra vertex or added extra vertices in the middle of the of a triangle so i can you know make it look more like a curved handle and i did my surface thing again where i just added some more faces by highlighting the vertices of course and then here i did extrude and i added a couple more edges and I think I like forgot an edge or something somehow. I don't know, so I had to add back another for surface thing. And then up here, I was just uh, lining it up to make sure it all looks straight and stuff. So, um, you know, it wouldn't look wonky. And then here I'm trying to make the hook. For the life of me, I could not figure out why this was not working and like why it was not moving smoothly. And like, it took me forever to f realize here, right? Like right here, I'm like, okay, it's not working, it's not working, it's like snapping to you the the main base and i was trying to get like a, a a little bit of a slider curve but for the life of me i couldn't figure it out the reason why is on the top uh i still have my magnet um what's called attached so yeah it would still be it wasn't like snapping to the or it was snapping to the angle which didn't allow me 
the capability and flexibility of just moving around slightly. Um, here, like the the top of it, I have to admit, it looks a little wonky. I think I added like too many surface areas, but that's fine. And here, I tried paralleling around with some rings. Um, I I added it wrong the first time. I added it like as in edit mode, so it added it to the object, which I didn't want. I just wanted a separate object object for now, so I can uh, play with around with it easier. And I know like the actual sword doesn't have it, but uh, it just looked cool, so I went with it kind of thing. You know my own spin on it um here i think this is when i actually finally figured no nah, it's not when i figured it out yet never mind that i have a magnet turned on i still have it um yeah i still have it turned on here i turn on a statistic so i can check to make sure the triangles doesn't exceed the limits which luckily um because for a file upload to roblox it has to be under 4,000 triangles and my project was actually super low it was only like 2,000 ones only like half had tons of extra room here you can see uh, I add a couple rings to make it look a little bit cooler and more textured. I believe I do play around with this a little bit more. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, here you go. I make the... Do, wait, do I finally figure it out? I don't finally figure it out. But, um, no, I actually don't finally figure it out. I still have the snap mode on. Which is crazy to me. It's fine. Kind of works. Here I make, like, the, the tip of the sword. So it looks, you know, more like a... A claw like how it is in the anime and then um here i, I move around the rings because they they look too like you know in unison together so i didn't really like it too much and here i duplicated it because i was going to add a third ring and then finally here i'm like dang it's not snapping right and then i finally turned off magnet mode so it no longer snaps in place so yeah uh it became a lot easier to edit after that and then here i think i go for a, a handle right yeah i do so I add a new cylinder and I make I raise it up to the top, make it super small. And then I have to make it long, you know, because uh, the handle has to be long. And then I believe to do I even connect it right? Yeah, okay, I do connect your right, as you can see. I place it in the right position and then I believe it like hangs out a little bit from the side, so I have to like make it a little smaller further in the future uh actually wait no it does it automatically with sh uh, smooth shading which is good then here what do i do oh oh yeah here okay i was trying to play around with it because instead of adding extra rings to make like handle grips i would rather just you know use um use the tools set by the actual blender and just like you know make more uh lines and vertices along the y-axis but for the life of me i couldn't figure it out so i had to look it up but then i did figure it out so yeah uh worked out like to my favor i guess so here i do some i think i try to move it around but i couldn't get the right movement angles so i had to reset it but i guess i forgot to move some vertices at the start and then here i believe i do extrude so i create like a new angle and then i size it up so it can like get bigger the new angle which is good it looks clean and then i do this a couple more times uh here i forgot to press extrude so that's why i was moving the whole shape so i have to press extrude first then control or and then size it up so it makes those little like bearing things and i believe here i'm looking up how to change it because i didn't like how it was like you know how it's like rounding a little bit on the sides um i was trying to keep it flat but I couldn't figure out how to like, well, I mean, I guess I could have just made it wider by using this. Oh, I, I, that's what I'll do next time. I'll just scale it up using the X, Y, not the Z or sorry. Yeah. X, Y, not the Z. And then, um, I make another, what's it called? Cut in the vertex because it wasn't like working right or something like that. Or no, it's cause it wasn't looking right. And then I, and then I smooch shade it. So it doesn't show as much edges. Then I add a final sphere at the top. Uh, just to be super small, you know, as a hilt to stop the, I don't know, your hand from sliding off your sword. Make it a little smaller. And then I believe I switched to, yep, number pad view. So I get a perfect uh, XY coordinate plane where it's just in 2D mode instead of 3D mode. So it helps it move it around a little bit more refined and with more care in each movement. 
after this, I believe I tried looking up some textures because, you know, I finished modeling the actual object. And I just need to texturize it. So first I look up some steel because, you know, the, the main sword is steel. And then I believe I add it in. And, um, yeah, okay, I go to my files and I couldn't find it to, like, start. So I had to, like, put it in my um what's it called paint software to change the file size from like the windowed view to uh jpeg so it can actually be imp imported into the file and then i realized oh you know it's kind of like kind of monotone because it's all like silver so i didn't really like it too much and also in the astral anime ichigo sword is like black and silver so i decided to look up black texture or black steel yeah black steel um texture and then i added them together because i realized oh i can't just you know use um different textures for an object because then how would that import into roblox it wouldn't like import correctly so you only have to use uh, one texture guys keep that in mind but the cool thing is you can make your own texture right so i just added the first image which is a steel which i was going to use for the astral sword and the black part which was the part I was going to use for the outside, or like, yeah, the non sharp side of the sword. And I import that texture in, put it in my UV mapping, and then I have to edit it so it looks right. So first, I move the sword bit to the silver side, and then I believe I move all the little sides up. Yep, I do. But then, it goes back, the whole sword is silver and just like the black is the bottom is um bottom and top circles are black as you can see from the uv mapping and then i tried moving the what some of the squares down back into the black to see which parts it was and it was the wrong side so i just flipped the sides pretty much uh and then i did some highlighting to make sure i got the right sides um darkened so after that i believe i try to move the top too because it's kind of black but uh i definitely like this look a lot better it looks you know more like the ichigo sword which is good. Uh, I move one more thing down just to make sure it's even because they looked a little uneven from left and right. But other than that, it looked good. And then, yep, I keep the I move the top to uh, full steel. Yep, full silver. So it doesn't uh, look out of place when you know you look at the sword from the top because then it would be like all black, and then some of the other swords would not be all black. Here I add the same textures to the rings. I make. All three of them black, I believe. I just import the same, uh, same exact um, textures on all of them. Make them small so they're all uh, black, not silver and white, or not silver and black. That would be a little out of place. And for the hilt, I just believe I made most of it black, or sorry, most of it silver, and then just a couple shades of it um, darker, cause so it standed out and popped out from the contrast so for that I just uh, x-rayed it so control Z guys if you want to know so I can highlight all the verti yeah, vertices at a time and then it actually worked out perfectly so I got lucky there but uh, yeah that's pretty much the whole texturing done I just saved it as a object file so I can import it into Roblox Studios and oh actually no sorry first what I had to do was make sure it was the right size because it would have been out of place if it like you know didn't look right if it was like twice as big as a character which it was so good thing I resized it so I first imported a character and then I actually forgot to join in all the all the objects together so for this I had to uh, I had to individually do it because for some reason it wouldn't like allow me to join all of them together it's kind of weird um, so I first did like one at a time and then I uh, joined all of them together I was going to upload my texture, but I realized that uh, I didn't really modify the texture in any way from, you know, uploading it to Blender and not, so I just left the texture the same. And for the sword, I just uh, upscaled it and sized it correctly to my um, Roblox character that I imported into uh, Blender. And it looked like perfect to me, so I just uh, orientated the point of origin to the center of the sword so it like was easy to move in Roblox Studio and then I saved it as an object and then I moved on to Roblox Studio because you know like the main part of what's done so I open up 
Roblox video, and here's my previous dummies. Go check out the other videos, guys, if you want to see how that went. Uh, though this one is probably the best so far. Hopefully, it gets better and better as we keep going on. And then uh, I just create a mesh part, add the file. Couldn't find it though for the life of me, so I had to go back to um, Blender to see where I put it. Because I had no idea where it was. I kept looking at all my files, but like, you know, that's why you need to stay organized, guys. So I opened up my last save and I see where I put it. I stored it in documents for some reason. That was kind of random. So I went to um, back to Roblox Studio and opened up it from documents. Imported it onto my character uh, without the textures though. That was just making sure it all looked good. And it was all gray. So I imported the textures and it mapped out correctly, which is perfect. Put it on a new dummy and make sure it's uh, in the right positioning. So I put it in the same exact position and I just scooted it back a bit. Yep, and it looked perfect. So I made it a uh, accessory. I don't know what to put it as, so I think I just put it as body back because it's either waist back or body back. So I went with um, body back, classic standard dummies. And then I made a new dummy just to make sure it actually works. So I modeled the what's it called. I created the actual new sword as a texture or as an object and I snapped it onto a new dummy and it fit perfectly so uh, it looked like the upload worked correctly which is good to see and then now we are just making the final adjustments and taking a little screenshot if you guys enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time